Welcome back to the free reinforcement learning course from NeuralNet.ai. I am your host, Phil Tabor, and you are watching Module 5, uh, C. Yes, C oftentimes comes after B. When we last left off, we had just finished coding up the policy iteration algorithm. What did we see? Well, we saw that this thing takes forever and a frickin' day to converge to the correct answer. So we have, of order, 316,000 or so sweeps through the state space to get to the optimal policy and value function. But nevertheless, despite being slow, it does finish the race. You can see we do get a negative 11 for the expected future reward from uh, the top left state. And we have zeros around the exit as you would expect because the agent gets zero reward stepping into the terminal state. We also get reasonable actions for the uh, policy kind of ushers the agent toward the teleporter that takes it down here and gets it closer to the exit. So all of that makes perfect, perfect sense. We also see that it took two iterations of policy evaluation and improvement to achieve this optimal result. Value iteration won't do any better in that respect, but it will do significantly better by about two orders of magnitude in the number of sweeps through state space. Now, for a trivial environment like this, it probably doesn't really matter who gives a crap, but if you're dealing with, you know, 10 to the 6, 10 to the 7 states, and you have to wait for hundreds of thousands of sweeps through those state spaces, you're going to be waiting a really long time time. So let's go ahead and get back to the browser. The Sorry, I keep calling it a browser. Let's get back to the editor and start writing the code for value iteration. So here we are in the editor. And yes, that's where we are, the editor. So what we want to do really quick before beginning is do a quick review of the algorithm for value iteration. So of course, you want to initialize your initial estimate arbitrarily. You want to uh, repeat until you achieve convergence basically policy evaluation by taking by analyzing the max action for the value function. And then finally, you want to output a deterministic policy such that the policy is equal to the arg max for that particular given state. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement that in code. And we're going to use creative naming here, iterate policy. No, iterate values, that's what we're doing the policy must be popular today. So we want to set our converged flag to false. We want to count the number of sweeps through state space. So we'll use a dummy variable to do that. Well, we're not converged. We want to set delta, where again, delta is the difference between old and new policies to zero. Iterate through state space. increment i, keep track of our old values, very important, have a list for the new values, iterate in over the action space, it's possible actions, sorry, for key in grid dot p, yes, and again we have to unpack this, and make sure once again that we are taking a look at the state transition probability that corresponds to our current state and action. And since we're taking an argmax, we want to do an append rather than, rather than an add. Whoops, alrighty. So next step, we want to find the new values, turn everything into a NumPy array. NumPy is nice, yes. New v equals new v dot max. Enter. And then we have our delta. And our check for convergence.
Now, what we want to do is policy improvement. So let's do that. So very similar. But again, we want to increment I because this is a whole nother iteration of state space. I keep calling it action space. Scroll down. Okay, if state equals old state and action equals act, then I want to append the state transition probability times the quantity reward, can't quite see, reward plus gamma times v new state. <clears throat> Let's see here. Actions dot append uh, action, of course. Very similar. Mm -hmm. So Almost done. So then what we want to do is print how many iterations, sweeps, sorry, of state space it took. And return V and policy. All right, so then we come down to our main function and comment this out for now, like so. And we will just do two rounds of policy iteration. Sorry, value iteration. And we will print V at the end. <clears throat> print the policy. And that is that. So now moment of truth. Did I lie to you? Was I wrong? I would not lie to you. So let's go ahead and move to the terminal and see what we get. All right, here we are on the terminal. And just for a refresher, it took about 300,000 sweeps through the state space to get the policy iteration good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to get the policy iteration correct, and it took two iterations of evaluation and improvement. So let's clear this and then run it again. And you can see it executes right away. So what do we see? It takes around 1,300 sweeps of state space, which is oftentimes less than 300 some odd thousand sweeps, right? And lo and behold, we get the same thing right? A very optimal policy down, down toward the teleporter, up into the teleporter, you know, down, right, all the way to the end. We get reasonable values for the two states nearest to the exit of the grid world. And everything seems to be all well and good. And this only took two iterations. So it takes the same number of sweeps, sorry, same number of iterations of, of evaluation and improvement, but it requires two orders of magnitude less sweeps of state space, hence it is significantly faster. So that is what I mean by saying that value iteration is much faster than policy iteration. It's not that it requires fewer iterations of, of evaluation and improvement, it's that it iterates through state space much, much faster. So I hope that was helpful. We have rambled on long enough. In the next video, we will talk about Monte Carlo methods, which are a model-free, non-bootstrapped version of reinforcement learning. So any questions or comments about this material, please leave them below. I respond to all of them. Uh, if you've made it this far, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.